welcome back to my channel and this is part two of my ask me anything q a and these questions will focus on nutrition muscle gain and fat loss um i hope you enjoyed part one if you haven't seen part one then i'll link it in this video but let's get straight into the questions i'm struggling to increase my calories during the bulk how do you get past that so i overcame this issue by essentially drinking more of my calories so during weight loss you may hear people say say to you don't drink your calories but as you're trying to gain weight it's kind of the opposite however you don't just start drinking anything i.e don't start drinking fizzy drinks or sodas and don't start drinking like high sugar fruit juices either what you want to have are smoothies and or homemade weight gainers so your homemade weight gainer will include obviously protein powder your preferred choice of milk you may add some a nut butter such as peanut butter or almond butter you would add maybe some oats and some fruits and you may even add some sort of um vegetables some people put certain vegetables like kale or spinach so you have a few options with ingredients but you want to choose nutritious ingredients that are going to help you hit your macronutrient goals i eat sugary stuff and fizzy drinks every day do you uh, I do not and I try to consume you know whole foods and minimally processed foods because these are typically the most nutrient dense and they're usually more um, less calorie dense sorry um, and this allows us to have a higher volume of food um, while staying within our macronutrient and calorie requirements also we get those important micronutrients that are key for our short-term and long-term health and we feel fuller and more satiated throughout the day when you consume you know these high calorie but low nutrient foods i.e fizzy drinks and sugary snacks you get cravings more often and they have very little benefit from a health perspective uh, i may have these foods maybe once or twice a week for snacks but i'm more of a savory person anyway so what supplement would you recommend to get shredded and keep muscle mass at the same time? Now, supplements are not the most important thing when it comes to, you know, losing fat and maintaining muscle. The most important um, factors for this are calorie deficit, resistance training and adequate protein. Now, there are two supplements I'd like to um, mention that may aid you in these goals, especially if you're intermediate to advanced when it comes to lifting. The first one I'll mention is the whey protein or any sort of protein supplement. And that's because when we're trying to lose fat, we have to be in a calorie deficit. And therefore for most of the day, our body will be in a catabolic state. And therefore there is more protein breakdown. And to overcome this, we actually need more protein uh, per day than we would need on a calorie surplus and during the bulk. Now, even though this is the case, we obviously need to consume fewer, fewer calories and therefore it, quite, it could be hard to get the required protein from whole food so, sources only because some of them provide a lot of fat for example or some for example some plant sources also have quite a lot of carbohydrates whereas whey protein um, because it's so refined especially whey protein isolate you're not getting much fat or carbohydrates you're just getting near to pure protein so about maybe 90 percent protein and this can help you hit your macro requirements while staying within your calorie requirements the second supplement i'll mention is creatine and that's because creatine has been proven to help build muscle and strength when compared to a placebo over a number of weeks now because creatine has shown to um, help with muscle building um, I believe that's a good supplement to have especially if you're trying to maintain muscle or build muscle while on a diet tips for gaining muscle starting off as a skinny guy so the first thing I say is that you need to get a consistent workout routine that puts progressive overload at the forefront so that means you will not be changing your exercises that much during maybe the first six to twelve weeks of your training program you'd rather be focusing on getting stronger on your chosen movements now in the next phase of your training you may want to 
switch up some of the exercises and provide a different stimulus to your muscles but you don't want to be doing this you know every one or two weeks you want to focus on a group of exercises get stronger on them and in that you know 6 to 15 rep range the next thing is that you need to increase your food intake try to increase um, the intake of more nutritious foods um, if you're struggling with that you know go drink more calories i.e with your home homemade uh, weight gainers or smoothies and also ensure that you're consuming enough proteins to support your resistance training and to aid recovery so i would recommend consuming 1.6 grams of protein per kilo of body weight when trying to gain more size and starting off as a beginner in the gym the final thing is patient so as long as you're being consistent just be patient and the results will show as long as you're training hard going to the gym with a regular routine and applying progressive overload and eating adequate amount of calories and adequate amount of protein do you recommend a pre-workout i don't use pre-workouts personally and so i don't have really one to recommend but if you're looking for a pre-workout make sure um, it has at least about 80 milligrams of caffeine it may also have uh, beta alanine and if it does aim for about six grams of beta alanine and if it has creatine uh, make sure it has at least three grams of creatine monohydrate and ensure that it's not a proprietary blend which the issue with proprietary blends is that they don't show how much of the specific ingredient um, individual ingredients are in the product now just to know that creatine and beta alanine do not have instant impacts that's more the caffeine you need to take um, creatine for at least a week before the benefits um, you start reaping the benefits which you'll see in maybe you know four weeks or eight weeks and for beta alanine you have even at least two weeks i believe of um like a loading phase quote unquote before you start getting the performance benefits which lead to well better performance will lead to more muscle gains but yeah it's the caffeine content which gives you that um quote unquote boost of energy let's say or reduces fatigue what is the best way to lose body fat so when it comes to what i call high quality weight loss or fat loss i think there are three important factors to consider the most important is the calorie deficit then you have resistance training and you also have adequate protein so we, we, we will not be able to lose any body fat if we're not uh, consistently in a calorie deficit over um, a period of time and the best way we can achieve this um, and make it sustainable is by looking at our current dietary patterns and seeing what small changes we can implement um, that you can carry out for a long period of time so for example can you change your snacking behavior uh, i.e. by reducing the number of snacks you have or by um, swapping higher calorie dense uh, snacks for lower calorie dense snacks such as fruits um, you can also look at your portion sizes so are you able to reduce the size of the meals you're having especially maybe eating a smaller portion of carbs and using maybe less cooking oil um, as ways to get your calorie uh, intake down and then when it comes to increasing your calorie output um, and burning more um, energy we can look at ways that you can maybe walk more often or cycle more often rather than taking a car everywhere or maybe use the stairs rather than the elevator and then can you do some hit workouts um, here and there or can you do some you know like stair climber and uh, maybe uh, incline walking or any other kind of uh, low impact but longer duration uh, cardiovascular exercises now when it comes to resistance training this is very important for maintaining the muscle you have and even building more muscle so you want to train in a similar way as you would when you're bulking you may do slightly less volume especially if you feel like you're struggling to recover but you want to do the same kind of rep ranges and use the same kind of weights when you're cutting um, don't start doing extremely high reps thinking that's going to get you more shredded because that's just um, false stick to that you know 8 to 15 rep range 
uh, maybe if you're into strength training you do a couple heavy sets at the beginning of the workout but don't go crazy with the reps um, and just train hard like you would when you're bulking and then finally adequate protein now this is very important to support um, the resistance training and to help maintain muscle mass and our protein requirements actually increase when we're on a, in a calorie deficit that's because um, during a calorie deficit we're predominantly in a catabolic state and therefore there is more uh, protein breakdown and to compensate for this we need to consume more protein um, than we would in a calorie surplus so consume at least 1.6 grams um, of protein per kilo of your body weight but you probably need more especially if you're intermediate to advanced uh, trainer so you may need two grams per kilo of body weight of protein per day what's a typical day's eating for you so this may vary slightly between a working day and a weekend for example or a holiday um, but in the morning i'll probably have like a high protein panini with you know low fat cheese and chicken or beef and um, some sort of veg um, like seeded bread for example uh, or I may have like protein pancakes if I've got a bit more time or I could just have uh, overnight oats which will have a scoop of um, whey protein within it um, and then I may have a protein shake uh, depending on if I work out in the morning or not um, or it could even be a protein smoothie depending on how many calories I want so if I'm like trying to gain weight and want to be in a calorie surplus it's more like to be a protein smoothie rather than just a protein shake uh, for lunch it could be high protein chicken salad for example or it could be um, a bit of rice or pasta with some veg and some sort of um, salad on the side but nothing too heavy for lunch I'll usually have my biggest meal for dinner which will, again could be rice or yam or fufu or sweet potato with um, a protein sauce like chicken or lamb or turkey for example and I'll also have a lot of vegetables um, and during the day I'll just be snacking on like fruits as well just because I like them and they, they have a lot of important nutrients for our health so it's not just for muscle building but also for our health and I do tr um, generally track my protein intake at all times so I always track my protein I'm consuming and I aim for about maybe 200 grams per day with carbs and fats I, I may not track it as closely especially when I'm bulking um, I don't track it too closely as I don't want to get too obsessive with tracking but maybe at the start of a cut I'll track a bit more just to see what my portion sizes should be looking like um, and before bed I may have another protein shake or like a pro some sort of protein snack um, if I need a little extra protein just to hit my macro targets so yeah that's what a typical day's eating would probably look like for me food choices we can all access so i'm going to speak from like a london perspective or big city perspective um, but it's quite easy to find affordable foods if you look around the supermarkets uh, you don't need to buy fancy things from like muscle works or you know meal prep services you can find relatively cheap chicken especially chicken is really cheap uh, potatoes are cheap rice isn't that expensive um, vegetables aren't too expensive either so it's only usually I don't know uh, if you go to like a health food shop I find some of those foods can be more expensive like quinoa and red lentils and you know pumpkin seeds for example those kind of foods can be quite pricey in health food shops but in a general supermarket you can find all your required um, foods healthy foods and foods that will get you to help you build muscle and hit all your macros in any standard supermarket so it's something I can list on my Instagram or do a, I'll do a food shop on my YouTube channel actually and show you how you can spend um, adequate amounts of money and get all the food you require when I was at university I didn't have a large budget but I was still able to eat relatively easily um, and also you've got to make you know your food a priority so you may have to maybe you'll cut spending in other areas so that you ensure that you're getting all the food that you want and you require what's a simple muscle building diet so 
I'll go through this on another video in, in a bit more depth, but you essentially want to have a carb source such as like rice or potatoes or couscous, for example. A uh, high protein source, so for me that could be chicken or lamb or turkey. And then you want your, your veg, veg that you like. So um, it could be peas, carrots, cabbage, whatever it is that you like. Um, put that together. Ensure that your portion sizes are big enough for your goals. Um, also make sure you're having enough meals so it could be three meals per day it could be four meals per day depending on your current size and how the portion sizes you like to have and also make sure it's food that you like so you can adhere to that diet um, when it comes to like uh, breakfast specifically you know you can have oats overnight oats are a good, great option for a lot of people um, I like paninis for example you can make your own they're quite simple to make especially if you have like a george foreman grill um yeah so and also you know have your protein uh supplements as well if you're finding it difficult to hit your protein requirements so i will go more in depth on this in another video very soon but you know that's the basics of putting a plate together and ensuring that you're having enough meals so that could be three four meals a day so that's the end of the q a i really appreciate all the great questions that you sent through to me you've also provided me with some great topic ideas that i can tackle in more depth on this channel so don't forget to like and subscribe as i'll be bringing some more content to you real soon and if you have any further questions just drop them in the comments and um, i can reply to you there or just drop me a message on instagram we can speak on there too thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe i'm out